Welcome everyone to Home Office Hours Live with Mr. Print. Thank you so much for joining us today. If this is the first time that you've joined us, Home Office Hours is a series of live discussions on timely topics that we've put together. We're featuring guest speakers as well as our very own Vistaprint team members. We knew that small business needs have changed during these times and we wanted to help. So we created this series as a way to connect during this time when we're all spending a lot of time in our homes and we're all dealing with various challenges right now. So we've talked to colleagues to help answer some of the questions that you are all having as business owners. And today we have with us Magda Huala, who is the Director of Marketing Strategy at Aspire IQ. And she's here to talk with us about activating and leveraging your online community. So before we jump into all of that, a couple of housekeeping items. We're going to take questions at the end of this session. And if you're joining us via Zoom, you can use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to submit those. We also know that a lot of you are joining us via the Facebook live stream. So if you have a question, you can just add that in the comments in Facebook and we'll get that in the Q&A in Zoom as well. We're also going to send out the recording after the session if you are one of the people who registered for this via Zoom. If you didn't register via Zoom, you can absolutely still find the recording. That will be up on our YouTube channel after the event. So let's jump into it. Magda, so let's start here. When we talk about your online community, what does that mean? What can an online community look like for a small business and who makes up that community? Yeah, so first off, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to speak on this topic. So an online community essentially just consists of anyone who engages with your brand in any capacity online. So this could be forums, things like Reddit, it could be social media, which I think for small businesses is, is the, the largest opportunity. It could even be things like uh, individuals engaging with one another in a review section on an Amazon page for a small business that's sold through Amazon. Um, any way in which they're engaging online, that, that makes up your online community. I think uh, one thing to note is actually defining what a brand community is. So a brand community is essentially any group of people like-minded customers, creatives, professionals, subject matter experts, employees, et cetera, any group of individuals that are connected by a shared identity and purpose that the brand, any brand empowers them to express. So the main difference between a brand community versus uh, you know, more of a, a traditional community is that the brand is really powering that sense of belonging. Uh, and I think the other thing to keep in mind is that when you think of brand community and specifically online brand community, it really is about uh, putting together a program that's mutually beneficial. So brands can, you know, extract value from their communities by leveraging them for things like product reviews, posts on social media, et cetera. And in return, the community, they find a sense of belonging online. They feel more connected to the brand and they feel more connected with one another. That's great. Thank you. I think it's very helpful to start out with defining online community and then what your brand online community specifically is. I think online community is, is so, so broad. So thank you yeah. for narrowing that down for us. Absolutely. So you, you mentioned a, a few ways that brands can engage with these online brand communities. Can you tell us a little bit more about how online brand communities can have impact both on your brand and on consumers? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think the, the, the key, point to dig into is this idea of being mutually beneficial. So I think that where some brands can fall short is they think either solely about how do I provide as much value to these individuals without necessarily thinking about the business impact of that, or more frequently on the flip side, they just think, you know, how can I provide as much value to my business? Um, and that's something that I think can work in the short term. But when you think about a really powerful long-term program, it needs to be mutually beneficial. So I can give you a couple examples. So let's say a brand needs more content that they want to use for their social media pages, for their website, whatever it may be. They can turn to their community of loyal customers that are frequently purchasing and are, you know, active on social media in whatever capacity, whether they're traditionally influential or not. Um, and they can ask them to uh, share the content that they've created and, you know, allow the brand to have rights to that content. And in return, they can offer, you know, some sort of reward, something as simple as we want to include you in um, our, 
our next batch of like new products. We want to, you know, give you first access to what we're creating. We would love to give you, you know, a 20% off discount the next time you purchase, basically figuring out a reward structure that makes sense for that engagement. Um, so that the community member feels like they're really a part of the brand and part of like the brand building initiatives. And then the brand of course is benefiting because they're getting, they're getting content back. And then I think when you think about the overarching consumer, so let's say I perhaps am not necessarily a part of a brand's community, but as an outside consumer, for me, I love to see community first focused brands, brands that basically are engaging with their customers, brands that are taking uh, community generated content and redistributing that across their own marketing channels. For me, that really shows that they have a community first approach as a business. And even again, if I'm not a part of that community as a consumer, that'll make me more inclined to want to engage with them because that's, that just aligns with, you know, my personal values as a consumer. And I'm just one data point. We actually did um, a survey where we uh, interviewed, I believe it was 155 brands and over 500 consumers. And the overwhelming sentiment was that consumers wanted to see brands and engaged with their community in a meaningful way. And that, and that was, I believe it was, you know, close to 80% of consumers indicated that that was a reason why they would choose one brand over another. Um, so yeah, so that, that's kind of, you know, to, to bring it back, one example could be, uh, brands leveraging their online communities for online content. Another example could be brands tapping into people that are, um, you know, experts, like subject matter experts. Let's say you're a small beauty brand and ask them to create tutorial videos. You could certainly ask for reviews in a way that is compliant with the FTC. So saying, you know, if you liked the, pro the product, here's a, a survey to fill out. We would love your feedback. We would love, you know, your review. Um, lots of different ways that, that brands can tap into this online community to really make, make a big impact on their business overall in a relatively, you know, low cost way. That's awesome. Thank you. I, I love your point that it's really, it, best practice is about creating value. And, you know, whether that's for you, the brand, the greater pool of consumers, that's really what you should focus on. I think that's an amazing point. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So you named off a whole lot of ways that you can harness this online community. How would you go about engaging with someone? Um, so let's say you've, you've found someone within your online brand community and you'd like to partner with them in any one of those ways that you just mentioned. Well, I guess let's dial it back a little bit. One, how would you find them? And then two, how do you engage with them? Yeah. So there are a couple different ways. So let's think about the social media online community. A really easy way to find people that are engaged with your brands is uh, in any capacity is by looking at things like hashtags, geolocations. Let's say you're a restaurant, you could always see the people that are frequently posting at your location. Um, I work, you know, at Aspire IQ, and we are a platform that basically enables brands to find people that are in their community and are speaking about them online. So you could certainly use a tool where you're able to search through, you know, everyone on social media to find out, you know, who would be the right fit. Um, but really, you know, you can you can dial it back and you can just use your phone, look at hashtags, find people. And then I think sometimes brands can overthink the next step there. Uh, but it really could be something as simple as shooting someone a DM and saying, hey, we see that you've posted at our restaurant three times. Or we see that, you know, you're regularly speaking on the topic of health and wellness. This is who we are as a brand. Like, are you interested in just striking up a conversation? It doesn't have to be right out of the gate. Let's get lawyers involved. Let's get a contract on the table, um, especially when you think about more like niche communities versus kind of this traditional thought of like social media influencers. Uh, really, there is easy ways to find these people. Um, if you're thinking about tapping into a community of customers, another easy way would just be to look at your data and sort by people that are your top customers and shoot them a personalized email versus just having them as a part of you know, uh, an email marketing campaign that you have running, send something more personalized. I know that again, for me as a consumer and the data points that we saw with our research, that is something that, that really resonates. And then you can strike up a conversation and figure out to what capacity you could work with that, with that customer. Yeah. I think that direct outreach and that personal touch really goes a long way. Um, thank you for pointing out. It can really be that simple. Yeah, yeah. I think that, that um, especially on social media, people are there to connect. I think that social media perhaps has gotten a little bit away from us, but at its core, social media is, is 
a community. It's where you go to socialize, whether it's with brands or with one another. So I think that um, more often than not, people are receptive to that sort of that sort of outreach. And even if it's not the right fit, maybe they don't have you know, the capacity to be kind of a formalized member of your brand community, uh, at the very least, they are getting kind of six star service by getting reached out to by someone from a brand they really love. Yes, absolutely. You, you mentioned earlier using your brand community to crowdsource content. Let's talk about that a little bit more for a minute. What kind of content could you get from your brand community and what kind of ways can you use that? Yes. So this is really topically relevant, especially right now with so many people staying home. Um, content is hard to hard to get for a brand. You know, like the the days of having these massive studio shoots are maybe not over forever, but for right now, definitely on pause. And I think that that's where community, your community can come in and help to create high quality assets that you can reuse. So there's kind of a couple schools of thought when it comes to community source content. There's the more traditional partnering with people that are content creators that are kind of social media influential in the traditional sense. You would probably work with those individuals and pay them uh, for creating high quality assets for your brand. Um, the benefit of working with someone who is more of like a polished seasoned content creator is you can have a little bit more control over the content they create. So again, let's use the example of being a small beauty brand. If you know that you need content that is showcasing a certain product on a certain skin tone, you could reach out to someone that fits that demographic that is a seasoned content creator and get really beautiful high quality assets that you can use. Um, but even taking a step back from that, if there are people that are in your community that are just posting about you organically, you can always just simply comment on their post and say, we love this. Can we repost? Um, and that's a really easy way to capture that content. And what we've seen nine out of 10 times is that consumers are elated when their brand reaches out, you know, their favorite brand reaches out and says, oh my gosh, can I repost this? Um, so that's kind of the the way you can go about getting the content and the type of content they can create from you really i mean it really covers anything and everything you could want if you're working with an in, like a, a social media influencer content creator you can ask them for video content for long form blog content for you know their expert opinion on a certain topic if you're just looking to your community who's already posting then you can basically say okay i need more photo assets let me see who's using my branded hashtag let me capture that let me ask them for rights and then let me repurpose it and really it allows you to one get content in a time when it's very very tricky to set up photo shoots in house two it really is quite a bit more cost effective because you are able to kind of crowdsource all of these creatives um, in, in a way that's not this, you know, tens of thousands of dollar photo shoot. And three, I think going back to my earlier point, it really does put forward the message that you as a brand are a community first brand. If you're highlighting content created by and for your community, that's not only going to resonate with the people that are creating the content, but again, other consumers who can just say, hey, I see myself reflected in this brand because they are promoting content created by someone that I can identify with. Um, so I think that that's really probably the, the biggest key benefit is getting this personalized content that really shows this community first message. Yeah, I totally agree. I think a lot of us nowadays are looking to see ourselves in any businesses marketing or content and using your brand community to help you help you create that and reflect your consumers in your marketing is really helpful. Mm -hmm. I want to bring it back actually to an example we talked about before we jumped on today. You had been mentioning how you actually discovered a new restaurant for takeout via yes. someone who was a brand advocate. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So I think that this, this was such a good example of the power of community at work. Um, so uh, there, there's someone who's within my network on social media and she was posting regularly the different um, takeout options because she wanted to support small businesses, especially during this time by getting takeout from them. So she was posting about this restaurant that is a local Mexican restaurant that I didn't realize was doing takeout. She posted about them. She basically gave like a mini review of the menu that she got. She created really beautiful photos um, just because, you know, she, she wants to, that that's what she loves to do. And uh, 
in return, that's how I found out about the brand and, or the restaurant, excuse me. And I ordered for them the next day and I actually ordered from them again last night. Um, so this really just shows how, um, brands could actually maximize the impact there and reward this individual in some capacity, whether it's with, um, you know, a, a free add on for her next order or, or some sort of discount, something like that to, uh, one, make sure that she feels seen by this brand, you know, she's, she's promoting them. And two, also uh, give the brand the ability to hopefully get more of this type of content from her. So I think that especially for restaurants right now, there are so many uh, individuals that want to support small business restaurants and just small businesses in general. And I think that when, com when community members or when anyone who is an avid customer is posting on behalf of that brand, it really is a low, you know, low hanging fruit for the brand to just shoot a message to that individual, offer some sort of reward, or even just the reward of a, a conversation with, with um, that person. Awesome. Thank you. I love that example. I think it just, it really goes to show that right now people really want to support their local small businesses. So now is a perfect time. If you haven't already been engaging with your brand community, it's a great time to get into that conversation and get started. Yeah, and I think that a lot of brands, especially small businesses, are, are taking a step back to understand like, okay, what can I do to nurture those who are loyal customers of mine, especially in a time when new customer acquisition is trickier than ever. Uh, I think that that introspection is really serving a lot of brands well because they're able to start to create the framework for different community programs that will really transcend this time. So, you know, it could be something as simple as a brand wanting to regularly reward uh, people that are promoting takeout or people that are promoting, you know, seasonal menus, or, or it could be something that's quite a bit more sophisticated where there's events involved and, and things like that. But I think that a lot of brands are, when they take that step back, they're able to see like, there are a lot of people that are super loyal to us already. What are some, you know, clever and unique ways in which we can engage those individuals? So talking about rewards actually leads me to my million dollar question here what kind of budget would a small business owner need to start engaging and to start harnessing with these brand communities? Um, you've already thrown a few examples out there of creative ways like coupons, um, percentages off, things like that, that it doesn't always necessarily need to be a, a type of flat fee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a really, really good question. And I think it depends, which is not an answer that anyone wants to hear, but it definitely depends on the specific community that you're engaging. So if your goal is to generate high quality assets and you want to engage that super professional social media content creator, that's going to come with some sort of flat fee budget. And typically we say this can start, you know, you can have as low of a budget of $3,000 on a monthly basis to start generating tons of pieces of content by tapping into the right individuals. But the reward structure uh, has to make sense to the individual that you're, that you're communicating with. So for example, if a customer writes you a review, it would be inappropriate for you to then offer them payment. Instead, what you could offer them again would be like a uh, first look at a new product line. It could be an invitation to an event. Um, there is a store that I'm very loyal to. It is a small boutique um, based in Southern California. And I, you know, I'm constantly posting about them, writing reviews, you know, engaging with them on social media and, and kind of the reward structure that they have with me is around, you know, exclusive events, sneak peeks, et cetera. So those sort of things are, you know, pretty much free for a brand. Uh, other things like offering them percentage off for their next purchase, things like that, that will have a relatively low impact to your bottom line as a business. I think um, it's worth looking at all of the different communities customers, enthusiasts, influencers, experts, et cetera, and then figuring out what reward structure makes the most sense for them. That's awesome, thank you. I think it's, it's so helpful to have those examples of the different ways that you can engage and you can reward the community without necessarily making some sort of cash payment. And to your point, it, it isn't even always appropriate and that isn't always what they're looking for anyway. So there's a lot of different ways and a lot of different things that you can offer the community. Totally. All right, well, we have until 1230, so I want to make sure that we do have some time for questions. So I'm going to turn it over to Q&A now. I see that we do have a few questions already, so I'll start with those. But just a reminder, if you maybe joined us a couple of minutes late, if you're on Zoom, you can submit your question using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. And if you're on Facebook Live, just comment your question, and we'll get that in the Q&A in Zoom. All right, so let's go over to our first question now. So if All someone... Right. 
posts about your brand on social. How do you get access to that content, Magda? That is a really good question. So I think it, there are really sophisticated tools. So Aspire IQ, we actually partner with a brand called Curulate. And what they help brands do is basically at scale, like in mass quantities, get access to content that's posted organically. So it's, you know, algorithm that basically sends out messages to individuals that are posting. Um, so you can get at, you can get content at scale. Think about this for a brand like Urban Outfitters, for example, where they have thousands of people posting about them on a daily basis. It would be too hard to do manually. For a small business, though, it's as simple as just commenting on that photo and saying, you know, we love this. Do you mind if we repost? If you want more um, kind of legal protection, or if you want more rights beyond just posting on social media, it's always worth leaving a comment and then sending them a DM with a little bit more details about how you want to use the content. But as I mentioned before, more often than not, consumers are elated to have a brand reach out to them. Um, they feel seen, they feel included. And I can, again, speak to my personal experiences, but also from that survey that we did, um, this is a way in which brands really do like to be rewarded is, is by being reposted or is by seeing their content reflected in the brand in some capacity. Yeah, I think people really feel a little bit special when their favorite business reaches out to them on whatever platform they post it on and says, I love your content, can we share it? Um, people really like that. So you can post it directly within the platform then, you know, wherever, whether you saw it on Facebook or you saw it on Instagram, just reach out directly right there. Yeah. Sorry, were you just about to say something? I feel like I cut you off a little bit. Oh, no, 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 I was just saying, um, you're exactly right. Like I, I personally love seeing, seeing when a brand will comment on something and, and say, uh, can we use this? But yeah, I think just whatever platform you're on, that's the appropriate place to, to reach out and ask for those rights. Perfect, thank you. All right, so our, moving on to our next question here, how can you measure the impact of community building? So how do I know that it's worth spending my time on? This is a really good question. This is kind of another million dollar question. So we uh, work off of something that's called the space model that was actually created originally by CMX Hub, which is basically the biggest community of online communities ever. Um, so they are the subject matter expert in community building. The space model basically outlines different uh, business objectives that a brand can have with their community. So the S stands for support. So if you think about a brand that needs help with support tickets, this is kind of, this could be, you know, a brand like Apple where there's so many questions about the product, they need to offset some of that. So they create a community forum so they can help each other. Um, there's, you know, the, the acronym runs down and I believe that after this webinar, we'll be sending over some resources along with the recording that will outline all of this. But um, to give you another example, the A in the space model stands for acquisition. So if your goal around your community is acquiring new customers, um, we can help you know, create a strategy around that. So it really, uh, to, you kind of have to flip the question on its head and start with what your business outcome is and then craft a community program around that. For you know, another example, if acquisition is your goal, your community might be your affiliates. They're promoting your product and the goal is to get new users. But um, yeah, they're, they're, it's, it's definitely a process where you wanna take a little bit of time up front to save time down the lines so that you're aligning on your goals right out of the gate and then crafting the program around that versus the other way around. Always good advice. So start with your goal um, before you come up with your framework for how you would actually measure the impact of building and engaging with your community. Exactly. You know, it's, it's more than just creating a forum where everyone's communicating with one another. And it's more than just commenting on social media to, to get rights to, to content. It's really understanding, okay, content is a huge bottleneck for us. This is how we're going to generate more high quality content um, as an example. As always, don't do it just to do it. Do it with a goal in mind. Yes. All right. So moving on to our next question here. Is there any information or data on how content sourced from online communities performs when the business uses it? Yes, this is another really good question. So this has been a tried and true strategy that we've seen over the years with influencer content, community sourced content, but universally what we're seeing is that um, 
content that is sourced from the community performs better across key marketing channels than content that is a bit more branded, polished, and buttoned up. Um, so this is for a number of reasons. The biggest one being personalization. When you're tapping into your community to get content, you can be hyper personalized with the images that you're putting in front of your target consumer. So, you know, an ad that I would see from Urban Outfitters would look different than an ad that perhaps you see Corey living on the East Coast. It would be, you know, a different style, different um, type of individual. Uh, so, community source content unlocks that personalization. And then the other piece I would say is that you're able to just have more assets that you can constantly refresh because that's a big thing. There's ad fatigue all the time. People want to see fresh assets. Your community can help supplement that, especially in a time like right now when it is really, really difficult to produce content in house. Um, for more specific stats, with the uh, follow-up information that we'll be sending to everyone listening, we'll include a couple case studies that basically outline how community sourced content performed across a couple key different channels. The you know one that's on most people's mind is paid social ads. We also have information around website, email, etc. Awesome, thank you. And you know we've definitely seen some of that ourselves here at Vistprint lately. Uh, if you follow our social accounts, we've been reposting what we've been seeing small businesses all over the country doing to get through this pandemic and that's performed really well. Yeah. So our next question here is from Facebook Live. So how do I know if content is reaching the community? Oh, that's a really good question. So it depends on where the community is living and what type of content you're putting in front of them. So if you're thinking about um let's say social media content and you're wondering if it's reaching the right person and i hope i'm i'm answering this question correctly but um one thing that you can do is simply ask your community what sort of content they want to see kind of take a step back say we're a i'll use the beauty brand example again we are a beauty brand we're a small brand um, we can show you tutorials we can show you um, information from our experts or we could show you something else you can ask them what they want to see and then see if the engagement is increasing on content that is basically solving the problem that the community had. Um, so engagement rate is a really good, a good thing to track to see if your content is resonating with your target audience. Great point. And I think it's so important to ask for feedback and just keep that feedback loop going. Yeah, for sure. Right. So our last question here is actually one I think we'll have to get back to you on. This is coming in from Facebook Live. And the question is, how can we use Canva and Vistaprint together? So I'll be candid. I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head, but we can definitely do some looking into it and we can comment back on your question on Facebook. So I see that we're at 1229. So we're going to wrap it up for today. But Magda, we like to end these by asking our panelists for what your one final thought is from the conversation. Is there one key takeaway that you want to leave our audience with? Yes. So I think that the key takeaway that I would want to leave you all with is now is the perfect time to take a step back and invest in those individuals who invest in you. Customers, fans, influencers, whoever it may be, I think now is the best time to craft different programs that will reward those people that have been loyal to your brand in easy times and in hard times. Um, and also crafting programs that will have a big business impact, uh, whether it's from a content point of view, reviews, et cetera, anything we went over. But investing in those who invest in you is definitely my, my key takeaway from today. And I hope that, that the conversation we had was helpful in putting that into a bit more context. Oh, thank you. I love it. Thank you for taking the time to be on with us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you it. so much for having me. This, this was really fun. Great. Right, so we're going to be holding these um, every week, various relevant topics, and we want everybody's help for making sure that these are really helpful for you all and that we're covering topics you want to hear. There will be a survey if you're on Zoom that will pop up at the end, and we'll also send the survey out in the email afterwards, and we'll post that on the Facebook Live as well. So please do take just a couple of minutes, let us know what would make these more valuable for you, what kind of topics do you want to hear about, and you can also send your questions to us at homeofficehours at vistaprint.com. So thank you so much again, Magda, for joining us. And thank you to the audience for taking time and for submitting your questions. This has been Home Office Hours Live with Vistaprint, and we'll talk with you soon. Thank you.